Today on The List, science experiments to try for Halloween, lasagna with an unusual ingredient, and my entire family is gone. How Wakanda Forever deals with the loss of their star. Plus, learn the lingo of the sneaker community. If your drip is good, is it fire? Oh, yeah. But first, why complaining is bad for your health. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey, everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And I'm Christina Guerrero. And Jimmy, quick pop quiz. How many times a day do you think the average person complains? Why do you always have to hit me with a barrage of questions like this when you clearly know the answer? Why can't you just tell me? I mean, you're always OK, doing... according to what we've just seen right here from Jimmy, it is a lot. In fact, according to Stanford University research, the average person complains 30 times a day. Oh, I've got that beat by a mile. And all that complaining does more than annoy everyone around you. It can actually be bad for your health. That's right. How to stop complaining and start enjoying your life more. That's our featured story at the top of the list. You probably think venting about a bad situation will unburden you and make you feel better, right? Not so fast. It inhibits creativity, productivity. It's not great for productive communication. Shannon Monson, serial entrepreneur and founder of New Work, shares three tips on how to be positive in the face of anything. For starters, complaints don't cure a bad day. When you personally are complaining about something, you know, it's really just setting your whole day up for failure. And when it comes to other people complaining, that is a negative energy that you're holding space for. And we have to decide what boundaries we feel comfortable setting. Will you let this person complain over and over again to you? Or am I going to set that boundary and say, hey, I'm here to listen to you talk about this. Uh, I'd love to help you brainstorm solutions to the problem, but We've had this conversation every morning this week, and you know, this is my morning time too. If your complaints bleed over into your job, it can ruin work opportunities. People who complain do not get promoted, do not get career opportunities at the same rate as people who are positive and solution focused. With her businesses, she only seeks out people who are problem solvers who ask the right questions. What did I do to contribute and how can I be a part of the solution? I think that attitude shift is probably one of the single best career pieces of advice I could give. She says if you get caught in a negative conversation at work or home, redirect and be positive. The four part framework called I like, I wish, I wonder and what's next. She uses this concept from Stanford University's design school. One of her favorites is the positive observation statement. I like to shift a conversation from a negative to a positive change the verbs that you're using. If someone is complaining about having to deal with bad traffic. I know your commutes are really long, but I really like that you always share something interesting you learn in your podcast. You can also use the phrase, I wish. I wish there was a way you could still have that dedicated podcast time without the traffic. Or say, I wonder to help envision a better future. I wonder if there was a way that you could avoid the highway and make your mornings your favorite part of your day. The phrase, what's next, helps them be accountable. There's a podcast just started. I'll send it to you. Call me after your commute next week and let me know how it's going. Nixing negativity for a better day today is at the top of the list. Sure, sneakers are a $14 billion a year industry, but they're a lot more than just footwear. They're about community and lifestyle and making a statement. Teresa Strasser is getting her kicks in the surprising world of sneaker culture. Sneaker culture is becoming mainstream, and whether you rock Nikes, Adidas, or Yeezys, you are part of the movement. There's no other community like the sneaker community. Sneakers are life, sneakers <laughs> are my life. We stepped out with sneaker influencer Dominic Moscarello at the Phoenix Sneaker Con to get the basics of this lifestyle. It starts with being a sneakerhead. A sneakerhead is just having the love for the shoe, the passion and everything that comes along with that, the hustle. Sneakerheads are hustlers. And by hustle, he means scoring the hottest kicks like limited editions that aren't available in stores. For these, the big brands have apps. There's the sneakers app, there's the Adidas confirmed app. That is the best way to get shoes. It's almost the fairest way to get shoes, but it just irks you when you just don't get them. The apps work on a raffle system. You log in before a release or drop, as the cool kids say. 
You've no doubt heard the term fire to describe shoes like these, but that's just the beginning. Sneaker lingo is next on our list. The basic general shoe, there's a general release, it'd be like a GR shoe. These are the sneakers that you can buy retail, and while they're nice, they aren't always hype. When it comes to hype, it's like usually the expensive shoes. That's the shoes that are gonna be like a thousand plus dollars. What about drip? Drip is just everything. It's the shirt, the shorts, the shoes. That's all drip. And if your drip is good, is it fire? Oh yeah. Is there a white whale, like that one shoe that you dream of? In the sneaker community, it's called your grail. Dominic showed us one of his grails, a Louis Vuitton Nike collaboration. Gorgeous, it's a work of art. Can I afford it? $17,000. Wow. Last on our sneaker culture list, affordable or starter sneakers for the budding enthusiast. The best shoes that are around $100, a Nike Dunk, they retail for $100, and Air Force One around $100, and Nike Blazers. Dominic says Adidas Superstars and Stan Smiths are also a great choice in that price range. And for a small price upgrade, you can fly first class with Air Jordans. Who said man was not meant to fly? Air Jordan. The sneaker market slightly down. You can get Jordan 1s for under retail. You can get Jordan 3s for under retail. That's the shoe I'd suggest grabbing. How much is a Jordan 1? Retail just bumped up to $180. OK, so it's like a splurge, but it's doable. Yes. He suggests eBay and StockX as the safest sneaker sources on the secondary market, since both companies authenticate the shoes. Kicking off your footwear education. Can I drive that home? Because it's worth more than my car. You can walk them home. With Sneaker Culture 101. Guys, forget the ghost and goblin for Halloween and instead opt to be the mad scientist. Hattie Dijamal is going into the lab for some hair raising and mind expanding spooky science experiments. Getting kids interested in science early can have all sorts of benefits, and Halloween is a perfect time to trick them into liking it. We hear so much spooky stuff, we see spooky stuff, and at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of science. Jason Lindsay, host of Hooked on Science, concocts a few spooky experiments sure to fascinate them. Let's start with the dissolving witch. I have right here a big gigantic stack of styrofoam cups. On top, I put a witch's hat. Then fill a big jar with something that you might use to remove fingernail polish that's called acetone. Drop your styrofoam witch into the jar and the styrofoam cups are made of small pieces and those small pieces are coming apart because of the acetone. The smallest unit of matter is the atom. Put together atoms and you get molecules. So we put together a bunch of pieces to get what we call styrofoam cups and those styrofoam cups are bonded together. The acetone unlocks the bond. Allowing those pieces to slide against each other and we get a goopy dissolved witch. Next up, the haunted baby bottle. On the inside, I have some water. What I have here are two Alka-Seltzer tablets. We add water to them, they start to fizz, they start to bubble, they create a chemical reaction, gas. Drop the two tablets into the bottle. I'm going to screw the top on, and then I'm going to slowly rock this back and forth, and you're going to notice something happening to the bottle. As you mix it, you speed up the chemical reaction inside. There's a spirit in the bottle. Do you see that? It's kind of spooky. It keeps expanding. Then grab the cap and prepare to release the spirit. And there it goes back down, wow. So we learned that matter is everywhere, it's all over the place, and that matter can exist in three main states, solid, liquid, gas. Our final experiment, the bleeding paper. You're not gonna believe this paper in front of me. It's going to bleed when I smack it. It sounds spooky, right? No need to get scared, it's just science. Fill a pan with water and some baking soda. I'm gonna place my hand inside just like this. Then I'm gonna lift it up and smack it down on the paper. Three, two, one, the paper's bleeding. The goldenrod paper is actually an indicating paper. It indicates if something is an acid or a base. And since it turned red, it tells me that this in here is basically a base. Baking soda is a base. Acids you can find around your house could be from lemons and limes. If it's an acid, it stays orange. If it's red, that means it's a base. Halloween hijinks to make your kids see the magic of science. Come on the list. That is like a warm hug. I love it. Try a new take on an Italian favorite. Un bacio. Un bacio. Kiss. Kisses. 
Plus, how one teen used being bullied as a stepping stone. My past could help someone else have a future. And Shazam! Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. See who's coming back to the big screen. <laughs> I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Next on the list. YouTube, <laughs> we have crammed a lot of good information in the first half of the show, right? Whew. Now, I don't know about you, but I could use a break. So let's pause, maybe subscribe, and what the heck? Why not turn on notifications too? That way you'll never miss one minute of the list. Okay, back to the show. Welcome back, friends. Okay, get ready for this. Pasta, cheese, meat, tomato sauce, served up all warm and gooey. When you really want something satisfying, lasagna is always a crowd pleaser. So Jackie Denker is bringing us three easy lasagnas that'll have everyone asking for seconds and the recipe. Not only is lasagna one of the best comfort foods. It's not only just cooking, but it's kind of get together. I love that. Take it from Italian native Chef Rocco Pisano, owner of Sfizio Modern Italian Kitchen in Phoenix, Arizona, who is teaching us three ways to make this feel good dish. First, we're making lasagna bolognese. 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 This originally is from Bologna, the Bologna area. As for the ingredients, we're working with cooked spinach lasagna sheets, bechamel sauce, bolognese sauce, and of course, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. First, we're gonna start with the bechamel sauce. Okay, cover the bottom of your pan with it, followed by two lasagna sheets. Now you're gonna start to putting a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then we keep it going. Layer ingredients on top of each other, followed by lasagna sheets until you get to two to four layers. This looks so good. <laughs> Extra Parmigiano cheese will give you the nice crust on top. In the oven it goes at 380 for 20 minutes covered, 20 uncovered, and there you go. That is like a warm hug. I love it. <laughs> is that good? Bravo. Good. Our next dish is lasagna meatball pasticcio, typically found in southern Italy. I feel like we were in the beginner class, now we're expert level. We we'll step up a little bit. <laughs> okay. For this one, we're using salami, boiled eggs, sweet peas, ricotta, mozzarella, tomato sauce, bolognese sauce, parmesan, and mini meatballs. Mini meatballs. You should take one. Start with spreading tomato sauce and ricotta cheese on the bottom of the pan. You've done this a time or two, huh? Uh, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> on goes your lasagna sheets, and then layer on all those ingredients three to four times. Finish with more sauce and, of course, more cheese. Pop in the oven for 40 and let sit for another 40 before cutting. And manja. Mmm. Wow. You killed it, man. Uh, we killed it. Thank you. Finally, Chef Rocco's special lasagna. Did you get me flowers? Flowers, yeah. Nope, it's just one of the ingredients, zucchini blossoms. Get out! You'll also need sausage, caramelized onions, and bechamel sauce. Oh, and a large muffin pan for individual portions. So this is a personal lasagna. Okay. And we start with a little bit of bechamel. And then in goes all the rest of the ingredients twice with layers of lasagna sheets in the middle. I mean, talk about having fun with your food. There we go. Toss in the oven for 40 and boom. It's so good. Sweet, spicy, salty, all in one. For full recipes, head to thelisttv.com. Making our families happy and full by making lasagna. Friends, it is time to shed a positive light on people who chose to turn their hardships into light. For others, these stories are your weekly reminder that kindness wins. All right, at number one, Ophelia Nichols, a mom from Alabama who's become a social media star for being a motherly figure to her more than nine million followers. Are you on lunch break yet? No, that's all right. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. I mean, her username might be Shoe Lover 99 but she is best known as Mama Tots, someone who never fails to deliver some much needed words of wisdom. See, us women, we seem to forget there's this thing in the inside of us that when it enrages enough, we turn into a whole nother person and fight for our life, okay? And that's what you're gonna do. But over the summer, Ophelia lost her son. And it was her who felt the love from her followers who helped her with funeral expenses through a GoFundMe campaign that's raised over $280,000. I'm gonna finish my day good and know that every step, my baby child will be with me. Heartbreaking, but incredible. Up next is a 16-year-old from Detroit who uses her voice 
to uplift others. Whatever you face, whatever you come across, it's all for a purpose and it's all for a reason. Shannon Monet's YouTube channel consists of motivational videos for people who might be struggling with their mental health. It was an idea that stemmed from her own experience with bullying. After going through everything I went through in school, I realized a couple years later that I could help someone with my story and that my past could help someone else have a future. Well, she hopes to continue to grow her platform. And if you would like to support her, you can learn more at shannonmonet.com. All right, finally, a six-year-old from Florida who recently helped raise thousands for a great cause. Super excited that everybody's here for me. Sage Shapiro was diagnosed with alopecia when she was three years old. And this past month, she decided to enlist mom's help to give back with a lemonade stand where profits would benefit the Children's Alopecia Project. Awareness is the number one thing, so when you see somebody, especially a child that has no hair, don't automatically think they have the worst case scenario. It might just be this crazy autoimmune disease that makes the kid's hair fall out. Hundreds showed up to support, and in the end, $10,000 were raised. She's happy, she's living her best six-year-old life. I do love that story. And those are three stories that show kindness wins. Lots more coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. And on today's watch list, it's the ultimate movie world battle with two ferocious mega giants fighting for world domination. We're talking about the rivalry between Marvel and DC. Addy D. Jamal looks at some highly anticipated superhero movies coming our way. 2022 has seen Hollywood delivering a lot of movie gems on the big screen. Well, it's been an exciting year at the movies so far. A lot of good, a lot of evil, and we have a lot of superhero movies to look forward to. Talking about some of his favorite upcoming superhero movies is Rotten Tomatoes contributing editor Mark Ellis. Starting off with Black Adam. I kneel before no one. Here's the storyline. He got all these Egyptian god powers 5,000 years ago, but then just as quickly was imprisoned and couldn't use any of them. But now he's unleashed upon the world. You have two choices. You can be the destroyer of this world, or you can be its savior. Black Adam will bring the bad guy to justice. Dwayne The Rock Johnson finally lending his talents to a proper superhero movie. Black Adam drops in theaters tomorrow. Up next, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. No woman, no cry. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever is going to be, are you sitting down, the 30th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Most of the original cast is returning to their roles for the sequel. We're gonna miss Chadwick Boseman, who tragically passed away, so he will not be taking up the mantle of Black Panther here. Who will? That is gonna be answered. Black Panther Wakanda Forever hits the theaters on November 11th. And finally, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. <laughs> I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. This is clearly the most fun property in all of DC's live action adventures. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. This sequel follows the teenager Billy Batson, AKA Shazam, and his foster siblings as they fight the daughters of the Greek god Atlas. This is very personal. It's all coming to a head in Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Shazam! The new film promises to be bigger, better, and probably funnier. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is scheduled to release March 17th. Great superhero movies you'll love to nerd out over on the watch list. KG, I'm super looking forward to Black Adam since it's been established that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is my doppelganger. Oh, is that right? Were you his stunt double? Actually, I'm not at liberty to say. I'm sure. All right, well, in a small nod to the former WWE star, let's get ready to rumble. In one corner, coffee. In the other, tea. Which will come out on top? That's next. Welcome back. It is time for what's last on our list. You know, there's a hotly contested race happening in our country right now, and I think it's time we settle this 
once and for all. KJ, are you really going there? Oh, I'm going there. It's dividing America, Jimmy. Coffee versus tea. Okay. Yes, from the Washington Post, coffee versus tea smackdown. Which beverage will claim the world title for healthiest drink? Ding, ding, ding. Go, Jimmy. All right, it's on. No contest, it's gotta be coffee. According to the article, even, in a head-to-head -head battle, coffee has more benefits when it comes to fiber, microbiome health, and lowering the risk of diabetes and certain kinds of cancer. Well played, coffee. Well played. But tea drinkers came out on top when it came to being good for your blood pressure, cholesterol, stress levels, mental health, and productivity. Whoa, 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 whoa. Productivity was a draw. Come okay. on now. Fair enough. I will give you that. But yes, according to this article, coffee is the winner. KG, I'm very passionate about my coffee, as you know, mm -hmm. and I read every study that comes out about its health benefits, some of which weren't included in this article. Did you know it's a performance enhancer, both mentally and physically? It makes your reflexes faster, and American coffee has enough water content to overcome the diuretic effects of the caffeine, so it contributes to hydration. And he just keeps going and going and going. Might I recommend switching to decaf? Never. Never. And that's what's last on our list. Thanks for watching. YouTube, there's nothing free in life. I mean, there was that free cup of coffee, sure, but that's only after paying full price for 10 others, which just tells you how much money they're making off you on those first 10 cups, am I right? Even YouTube seems free, but there are ads, pre-rolls, you gotta pay for your internet service provider. So what's all this leading to? The list, we're pretty much free. We just ask a few favors, like would you please give, give this video a thumbs up, uh, leave us a kind or maybe constructive comment, and, Yes, would you also please subscribe? Just a few favors, as close as you get to free, right? Thanks for watching, and in fact, here's some more free episodes for you to enjoy.